The movie opens with a shot of a Jewish ghetto during the Holocaust. The Nazis are conducting a brutal raid on the Jewish population. People are seen being shot, beaten, and forcibly taken away by trucks, depicting the horrifying reality of life under Nazi occupation. Amidst the chaos, we are introduced to Mundek, a man who emerges to have a plan amidst the despair of Jews. Mundek and some other wealthy Jews are depicted trying to rally fellow Jews to escape the atrocities by seeking refuge in the sewers. Their determination to organize this escape becomes evident as they negotiate with Sosha, a Polish sewer worker who reluctantly agrees to assist them for a fee. Shortly after, we witness chaos in the city. As the Nazis round up Jews for execution, a group gathers in a room, attempting to flee the raid by escaping through the sewers. Among them is Mundek, who gathers his loved ones, including his girl friend Clara and her sister Mania. He guides them to a manhole where Socha awaits, but Mania didn't want to go along with them. Socha urges them to hurry and follow him, warning that the Nazis are closing in. Socha then leads the group of Jewish people through dirty, dark sewer tunnels where they must avoid rats and the filthy smell. He shows them a large hiding chamber and sets rules. It is understood that they must be quiet in order to not be found by the Germans. When Socha went outside, a Nazi soldiers found him and questioned why he was there and what he was doing. He claims to be a sewage worker fixing something, and they take him to the local comrade, who happens to be his friend. Sosha convinces him that the dead bodies of Jews were blocking the sewage, and he's let go. That night, Mania, Clara's sister, leaves the sewer to return to the ghetto. She didn't want to die in the dirty hole. Kalara then asks Mundek to go find Mania, but it is revealed that the ghetto was deserted. Meanwhile, Sosha comes back and tells them he can only take 10 or 11 of them to another chamber in the sewage. This causes arguments between the group, but Sosha ultimately decides who goes and they depart. Outside, Sosha and his friend explore the Jewish ghetto, now in ruins due to Nazi devastation. They are searching for any valuable items left behind by the Jews. Returning home, Sosha finds the same comrade with his wife. The comrade suspects Sosha of hiding Jews in the sewer, as there have been reports of food smells upstairs. Sosha denies it, claiming he's only seen dead bodies. However, the man insists that Sosha accompany him to check again. Upon arrival at the sewage chambers where the Jews are hiding, Sosha is terrified but compelled to to comply. Fortunately, the people in the sewer suspect something when they hear footsteps and they hide. Meanwhile, Sosha arrives with the comrade, but the area reeks of filth and is infested with rats. This prompted the comrade to leave earlier than expected, sparing Sosha and the hiding Jews from being discovered. Back at home, when Sosha's wife, Wanda, learns about the situation, she becomes fearful for her husband's safety. Sosha reassures her, mentioning that they're paying him anyway, but Wanda points out that the Nazis pay more per Jew, leaving the table in distress. The next day, the comrade returns to Socha and his friend, informing them about a group of Jews found dead and suggesting they must have had help. Socha remains composed and assures that if there are any Jews left in the sewers, he will bring them to the comrade. The comrade implies they're paying regardless. Socha's friend, Shapek, overhears this and decides he can no longer help Socha, surprising him. The scene shifts to the sewage tunnel, where Mundek is disposing of the dead Jews into the river, having died from exhaustion in the tunnel. Those still alive in the sewage try to maintain daily life by cooking and surviving despite constant arguments. Janek, one of the men that came along, loses his patience and threatens to kill them with a gun, but Mundek calms him down. In the following scene, Clara, Mundek's girlfriend, becomes distant toward him due to her sister's disappearance and assumed death, feeling guilty for not being able to protect her. Mundek comforts her. Meanwhile, in the sewage chamber, the group begins to bond and cope together. Children sing and people interact despite the difficult circumstances they face. When it's time for Socha to get paid, he's told to go to the cemetery. There, he's asked to dig up hidden jewelry because the man who owes him money doesn't have any cash left. Socha gets some of the jewelry and takes it home to his wife, Wanda, but she still isn't happy about what he's doing. Later that night, Yannick steals valuables from other Jews and runs away from the sewers, leaving his girlfriend behind while she's asleep. When Socha returns the next morning and hears what happened, he decides he doesn't want to deal with ungrateful and complaining people like them anymore. He also says he can't trust them if there are traitors among them, so he announces he won't help them anymore and leaves through the tunnels. Alone now, the group in the sewer relies on Mundek. The children are exhausted, rats pose a challenge, and food is scarce. Yannick's girlfriend collapses from hunger and fatigue in front of them. Clara, Mundek's girlfriend, sacrifices her own ration to help the woman. Meanwhile, Socha walks with Sushepek. Their relationship is strained. A joke about Sushepek's girlfriend leads to a fight, and Socha beats him. Clara and Mundek, distant due to Clara's sister's disappearance, find solace in each other. Mundek ventures out for aid but encounters a German soldier. So Socha intervenes, pretending Mundek is a Jewish prisoner. The German troop didn't believe his words, so they were obligated to take action. They somehow managed to knock him down to the ground, kill him, and then drag his body.
body away to somewhere hidden. Sosha then takes Mundek back to the sewage. It happens that the kids are lost, and Sosha finds them in the tunnel. He brings the kids back to the chamber where the groups are, and the parents thank him. He tells them he can continue like before, and the wealthy man gives him the jewelry that was brought from the cemetery. In the next scene, we see Sosha shopping. The woman who is selling him tells him about the brutality of the German soldiers. She tells him that they have hanged and killed 40 or 50 Jewish men to avenge the death of one Jewish troop. This is the same troop that Socha and Mundek killed and dragged. On his way home, he sees the men that were hanged, and one of them is Sechepek. Terrified and shocked, Socha heads home as if nothing happened. On the stairs, he is met by his wife, Wanda, and his little daughter. Not even noticing his daughter's presence, Socha tells of Wanda Sechepek's death. She blames him for his death, and she runs inside the house. Back at the sewage, the Jewish group is surviving just fine, but suddenly they hear a sound nearby and turn off the candles. It was some random guy who appeared to be in the sewer. After seeing the group in refuge, he runs out of the tunnel, screaming what he's seen. Socha has just gotten there, and fearing their discovery, he moves the group to another chamber in the sewage. Each one of them manages to pass through the tiny tunnels, except Janik's girlfriend. Friend. Socha somehow helped her hop, and she did it. Another woman accuses her of eating too much of their food, but abruptly she confesses that she is indeed pregnant, but not fat. The group is stunned to discover they are actually expecting a baby in the middle of this horror. Socha and Mundek, on their way out of the sewage, found the dead body of Janik. It turns out that the traitor didn't find his way out of the tunnel alive. They keep going, and Socha takes Mundek to someone who can take him to Yenoska. He wants to go there to find Mania. There were rumors that a lot of Jews were taken there as prisoners, so the man tells Mundek how to get there. Mundek sneaks into a line where Jewish men are taken to Janowska. He has volunteer soldiers. The scene then takes us to the sewage where Janik's girlfriend is having the baby. Clara and the other women delivered it successfully, and joy sparked in the group. That is when Sosha reveals to them Janik's death in the tunnel. Back in his house, Sosha is on vacation with his wife. He tells her about the baby that was delivered in the sewage, and she suggests they could use a little cute baby in the house. The next morning, when he gets to the sewage to tell them he could take the boy, Clara disappointingly reveals to him that his mother has smothered the little boy, shocked by the fact that he suggests at least giving the baby a proper burial. Meanwhile, we see the baby's mother zoned out and depressed. Clara comforted her somehow, and the group went through the tunnels to bury him outside. One member of the group was a rabbi, and while he was saying the Jewish prayer, Socha buried the baby in the snow. The scene then cuts to Mundek, finally arriving at the gate of the ghetto compound, where the Jews that were transported are. There was mania. Finally, she shows up at the compound, but she doesn't want to go with him to the filthy sewage. Meanwhile, a crazy-looking woman comes to them and keeps asking for Yanek. She is his wife, and he left her to die. Janek is indeed a traitor, huh? He tells her that her husband is dead and leaves there. Upon returning home to the sewage, Mundek finds Clara taking a bath using leaking water. She was unclothed when he arrived, and he was somehow compelled to get close to her. He tells her that Mania refused to come back, and that he tried his very best to fulfill her wishes. Clara then kisses him, and the two get intimate that night. The following scene shows the day of a Passover, and the Jewish people are there receiving some gifts that Socha has brought for them. The group is getting along, and that day, every everyone seemed to care for each other. The man's daughter feels ill at some point in the sewage, and Socha risks it all just to take the little girl for fresh air. He plays with the kids, and shortly after, the father of the kids finally breaks it down to him. He no longer has anything to pay him, and last Friday's payment was the last, but Socha sincerely cared for the people and told him not to worry. Back in his home, the comrade and his friends came to him drunk in the middle of the night. Not to be suspected, he simply lets them in and starts to serve them food, but his daughter accidentally slips about the Jews through her mouth, but Socha somehow manages to trick them into calling her doll a Jewish. That night, after they leave, Socha gets angry with his daughter, but Wanda protects the little girl. Back at the sewage, the group is seen sympathizing with one another, and the rabbi says a prayer to give them hope. The next day, Socha is seen at the church with his family. Shortly after, it starts to rain, and we see the sewage being flooded with water. Socha realizes this, so he leaves his family at the church to go check on the group down there. But when he arrives, he sees the comrade and his friends digging a hole through the sewage to use it for laying mines for the upcoming Russians. He is terrified of the group's discovery if they go deeper, so he tries to convince the comrade that they are gas pipes down there. His words weren't considered, and the comrade asked him to lead the way to the gas pipes. Socha feels like he has no choice, so he goes into the dirty water. At the same time, the people in the sewage are trying to stop the water from coming in. The water is too much for the group, and they are going to drown. The men try to hold the water, but the water is too strong. Socha is leading the comrade when they see some kitchen equipment brought 
brought by the water. Socha stops walking, and the comrade realizes that Socha is the one who is hiding the Jews. He points a gun at Socha for being a traitor, but Socha fights back and manages to go through the flood to safety. The scene then shows the group almost drowning. The water is up to the top. Mundek tries to escape, and the other man is holding his kids. Clara also tries to survive, but the water is too much. The scene then changes to the next morning, and we see Socha tired from the dirty water. He sees the comrade's dead body in the corner. He thinks that the water might have killed the group too, but when he gets to the room, they were in, all of them are alive and well. They tell him it is a wonder that the water just went away. He is so happy and amazed. He tells them he will go and get some dry clothes. When Socha gets back home, he doesn't see anyone there, so he thinks Wanda must have left him. He falls asleep on the floor. The next morning, Wanda shows up next to him, looking really happy this time. Meanwhile, a group is underground, listening to what's happening outside. They find out that the Russians and Germans are already fighting. They hear gunshots and bombs exploding, and the tension between them grows. Mundek suggests that the Russians can help them and wants to let them know they're in the sewers. Socha rescues Mundek, bringing him into the light. The rest of the group follows after spending 14 months in the sewers. The movie ends with everyone emerging into the light and receiving some food and drink. Wanda is there beside her husband, and Mundek hugs Socha. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.